Good morning, class. Good morning, <laughs> Hi, I'm Keith Moore. Welcome to Faith School. Faith School is the place where our faith gets fed, our spirit grows stronger, and we learn how to be an overcomer. That's God's plan for every believer. It's not His will for us to go through life defeated. We are to grow in the things of God, become stronger and stronger. We're to learn how to receive His highest and best. The more blessed we are, the more we can be a blessing to others, more blessed to give than it is to receive. But this doesn't just happen uh, automatically. The Scripture said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. Uh, the Spirit of God said to people that your faith grows exceedingly and your love is abounding. So in the spiritual things, things of God, they're progressive. We are to feed and exercise and develop and grow, hence faith school. We've saved you a seat right here on the front. And we want you to get your Bible, get you something to take notes with, and come right on in here and join us and let's get our faith fed today. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we all agree together, asking for utterance, asking for the anointing, asking for your presence, enlightening us, illuminating our minds and spirits and hearts, giving us answers and help and direction. Give us eyes and ears and hearts that can receive it, and we purpose to not just be hearers only, forgetful hearers, but to be doers of what you show us in Jesus' name. Thank you for another day in faith school. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if you would turn to Romans, the 10th chapter again, we've been looking all this week at Romans 10, uh, starting about verse 13 again. How faith comes has been our focus. We learned in previous weeks uh, that faith is God's choice for us as a lifestyle, a way to live. And um, if you'd like to get those messages, they're available. Go back and take the time. Uh, doesn't take a whole lot of time to do this, but each week we're building on what we learned the previous week. And uh, it doesn't take long if you're learning about how wonderful faith is and what it'll do for you until you say, okay, okay, I'm convinced. How do I get this? Where do I get this faith? How do I get this faith? And the answer is right here in the perfect textbook. Romans 10, 13 tells us, uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The, and then he goes into detail how this process works, how you get from lost and faithless to faith and saved. He says, verse uh, 14, how will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And the answer is they can't. They won't. How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So here we see how believing is initialized how it begins. It begins and comes from what you're hearing. How shall they hear without a preacher? So it's not just the sound of the words mechanically, uh, the, the sound waves bouncing off your ears. Why would you, you need a preacher involved? Because as he goes on to say, how uh, will they preach except they be sent? So the sending has to do with the call of God and the anointing. He goes on to say, as it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Verse 16, they've not all obeyed the gospel. Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report or the, 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 the hearing from the preaching? Verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Let's say that out loud. So faith comes by hearing 
and hearing by the word of God. We looked those words up and saw when it says hearing by the word of God that it's the word rhema and it's the word Christos. Hearing is by or through the spoken word that is anointed, the anointed spoken word. That's how faith comes. Not by hearing just anything, but by hearing the anointed spoken word. Now, in, uh, if, if you look in 1 Timothy, the first chapter and the fifth verse, we got into this on yesterday, talking about real faith versus that which is called faith. 1 Timothy 1.5 says, The end of the commandment is love out of a pure heart, of a good conscience, and of faith un feigned. He describes uh, faith, in this case, as faith that is not feigned. Feign means pretend. The CEV says true faith. I like the Wiest translation of this. It says a faith that is not assumed, but real. So there is a what people call faith, but it's really assumption, assuming, and or presuming. But it's not real faith. Real faith is not presuming anything. Real faith has heard from God. Now, that's uh, something that I mentioned yesterday. I said, you know, what if somebody said, I'm going to have Brother Keith, you know, come cut my grass. He's going to cut Come cut my grass. Well, it's not that I I would say I'd never cut your grass, but you can't believe I'm going to cut your grass unless I told you I was going to cut your grass. And you and you just going off and, and imagining things. So, oh no, uh, Brother Keith's going to come. He's going to take out my trash. He's going to cut my grass. He's going to do my laundry for me. Well, <laughs> you are likely to be disappointed. And and if you say, I'm believing that he will, because you've learned some things about faith principles, and you say, no, no, now all things are possible to him that believes. And if I'll believe it in my heart strong enough, and I say it, then you have to do it. Well, no, that's wrong. That's presumption. That's assuming something. Faith in me can only be based on what I told you. I would do. Faith in God can only be based on hearing from Him what He told you He would do. You see an example of this in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, I believe it is. Yeah, Deuteronomy, the first chapter, and we'll go over there and read. Deuteronomy 140. Deuteronomy 140. The Lord had told His people Israel that He had delivered from Egyptian bondage, from slavery. He told them to go into the promised land and that he had given it to them. Now go up and possess it. Had they heard from God? Yes. Yeah. They, could they have faith now to possess the land? They can because he told them, I gave it to you. Go up and take it. But when they saw the walled cities and they saw the giants, they said, no way. You can't do it. Uh, basically they're saying, you know, what God told us is, is not going to work out. It's not right. We see this. So they rejected what he told them. So he said, okay, turn then. Go back into the wilderness. And because you wouldn't believe what I told you, you're going to wander around out here for 40 years. Well, that upset them. And they said, okay, no, we're going to go. We're going to go. If you read Deuteronomy 140, and and, uh, you'll see a pattern here. He said, these people are stiff-necked. They are obstinate. You know, he he gave them the the manna test. And he told them, uh, the manna fell. And he said, all right, go out and and gather it up. And uh, and then he said, "Don't, don't leave it. And so then they left it. And then he said, on the Sabbath day, don't go out and get some. So guess what they did? They, they went out. Basically, if he said don't, they would. And if he said do, they wouldn't. 
Remind you of anybody? No, just don't raise your hand on that one. Um, <laughs> and, and this is the issue. You know, he's saying uh, whatever he tells you to do, you can only have faith to do that. Then if he tells you something else, you can only do faith, have faith to do that. We've got to stay with what he's telling us. Well, he said, go in and take the land. They said, no, we can't. He said, all right, then go back into the wilderness. They said, no, we're going to go now. <laughs> That's a problem. That's a problem. So when he's, uh, verse 40, he said, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And then they answered and said, we've sinned against the Lord. We'll go up and fight according to what the Lord our God commanded us. And when, he had girded, when you had girded on every man his weapons of war, you were ready to go up the hill. And the Lord said to me, say to them, go not up, neither fight, for I'm not among you, lest you be smitten before your enemies. Now let's just stop right here. Have they heard from the Lord? They just heard from him. Can they have faith to go up and fight? He just told them, don't do it. Don't do it. You turn around, go into the wilderness. Verse 43, he said, so I spoke to you and you wouldn't hear it, but you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord and went presumptuously up into the hill. And the Amorites which dwelt in the mountain came out against you and chased you as bees do and destroyed you in Seir, even unto Horma. And you returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord wouldn't hearken to your voice nor give ear to you. Why? Because they wouldn't listen to him. Can you see a, a perfect picture of presumption? Presumption. He said, go up and take the land. They wouldn't do it. So he said, all right, you don't want to do it. Go back into the wilderness then. They said, no, no, we're ready to go. He said, no, I'm telling you, don't go. Can you see faith is a living thing? It's not, everything's not set in stone. We have to hear from him every day to walk by faith. In fact, um, a perfect picture of this is in John when the Lord said, uh, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And he, he go, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. He said, if you'll abide in me, if you'll stay in me, and my words are in you, you can ask whatever you will. It'll be done to you. Does this sound like faith? That you're having faith, you're praying in faith, you're speaking in faith, and things are happening. But you can't separate it from this living communion with the Lord. And if he's telling you to do something and you don't want to do that and you say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have faith to do this. You can't have faith in him to do something contrary to what he told you to do. Other people may not know uh, that you didn't hear from him or that you're ignoring what the other thing that he told you to do. And they'll just be confused when you say, I'm believing for this and I'm saying this is going to happen and it doesn't happen. And it ends up badly. And then people that don't understand say, well, see there, that faith doesn't work. No, you, you didn't listen to him. Your faith has to be in what he told us. How does faith come? You don't just pull something off the top of your head and say, I'm going to believe this. I'm going to believe for this. We seek him. We feed on his word. We listen to his spirit. We ask him what we should say and do in this situation. And he answers us. He's, does he still speak to his people? He does. And when we've heard from him. Oh, is everybody with me on this? When you've heard from him, then you can have, now I can have faith. I've heard from him. He said, do this. He said it in his word. He said it to me by his spirit. So this is what I'm going to do. Now, when I say it, when I step out to do it, things will happen. God will be there. Things will work. Miraculous things even will happen. Hmm? In response to my believing and saying, but it's not me just doing something on my own. I have heard from him. And that faith came. Living faith that I'm now acting on. 
Uh, you'll see this so clearly. We're going to look at another example of this over in uh, the book of Hebrews. You'll see such a, such a clear example of this. The Lord will tell you to do a thing, and from hearing Him, you can have faith. And in this 11th chapter, the great uh, hall of fame of faith, you'll see name after name after name after name of people who heard from him and got faith. The Bible said uh, Noah heard from God that there was going to be a flood and he had faith to build an ark and to work on it for years. Every one of these, uh, you cannot separate their great exploits of faith from the fact that in the beginning of this thing, they heard from him. In uh, Hebrews 11, let's look at one of these. Hebrews 11 and verse uh, 29. It talks about the Israelites. It says that uh, under Moses' leadership, Hebrews eleven twenty nine, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. This is an amazing thing. The, uh, the Egyptians were uh, chasing after the Israelites, and this is the proverbial in between a rock and a hard place. They, they had gotten down to the Red Sea. They couldn't go any further. Pharaoh and his troops are closing in on them. They are furious. They want to just kill them and wipe them off the map. What do they do? They, they can't turn around, go back. They can't go forward. And uh, the scripture says that the Lord spoke to Moses and said, uh, why are you crying out? Uh, tell the children of Israel that they go forward, lift up your rod, stretch it out over the sea, and the children of Israel will go over on dry, dry ground through the midst of the sea. He spoke that to Moses concerning their situation. How does faith come? Come on, help me out, friends. By hearing. Can they have faith now to cross the Red Sea? Yes. This is the only way they could have had faith because natural laws are that you can't just walk across the sea here. Uh, we don't have anything. In, there's no ship. There's no boat. There's no way to cross it. But they've heard from God. When you've got a word from the Lord, anything's possible. Everything's possible. But you have to hear from Him first. You have to, you have to ask and, and seek and inquire. And He'll give it to you through His Bible and by His Spirit. But notice the next uh, phrase. Uh, Hebrews eleven twenty nine. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea is by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Now, a saying, we'd probably say today, attempting, attempting to do it. Now, the actions were the same with two completely different outcomes. The Israelites stepped to go across the Red Sea and God caused a wind to blow and it pushed up the, the water in the, and split it and we, it must have been very cold because the uh, scripture says that the heart of the sea was congealed and they, it took faith to step down into the seabed with these walls of water on both sides. You've never seen this before. And you, nobody has any idea how long <laughs> this is going to last. But because they had heard from the Lord and he told them, step in, go, they did. And the entire, we know it was 600 and some thousand soldiers, plus all the women and children, their livestock and the stuff, millions of people went right across there, like on dry ground. Well, the Egyptians saw them. They saw them do it. And so they thought, well, we'll do it too. 
Did they step out by faith? Did the Egyptians step out by faith to cross? <laughs> I don't know what they were calling it, but it wasn't faith in God because the scripture says they attempted to do it and they drowned. Now this is a real lesson and it explains a lot of things. How that two people can do the same action and one of them have a miracle and the other have a disaster. Can you see this? And maybe to the, to the person looking from the outside, they did exactly the same thing. And that's how some people come to the conclusion, well, you just never know, you know, what God's going to do and this, what, all these faith stuff that people talk about, that's just a bunch of junk. No, it's entirely the difference between what God told this person and what the Lord told that person. And you try to do what they did and the Lord didn't tell you the same thing he told them. It's not going to wind up the same. Even though maybe generally his will is the same, still faith comes by hearing. What did God tell the Israelites? I'm going to read it again. He told them, why are you crying out to me? This is over in Exodus 14, 15, and 16. He said, why are you crying out to me? He told Moses, tell the children of Israel, go forward. Are they hearing from God? Lift up your rod, stretch out your hand over the sea, divide it, and the children of Israel will go over on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Have they heard from God? Was it an anointed word that was spoken to them? That's how you get faith. Can they have faith now to do the impossible? to step out into something that would normally was impassable. They, they could and they did. A miracle. They had faith to cross it. What had he told the Egyptians? <laughs> did God say anything to, did he tell the Egyptians to step in and to cross? He did not. He had spoken to them though. At least seven times that I noticed, he told them this, let my people go. <laughs> right? They can't have faith to cross the Red Sea because he didn't tell them to cross the Red Sea. Moses wasn't part of the Egyptians and they didn't hear what God told Moses. They didn't hear what Moses told the people and it wasn't addressed to them either. The only thing the Egyptians could have had faith for was what God told them. Let my people go. They could have had faith to let them go. That, that's the only thing God told them. And, and, and we laugh about it, but there was an element of faith. Their country by this time, after hundreds of years, the economy was largely based on all this slave labor. And no doubt, they were at a point where now they're in fear that their whole economy and their whole way of life could collapse without this. But if God tells you something, he's going to take care of you. They could have had faith that if they let all these people go, they would be okay. And God would take care of them. And, but they didn't. They didn't have faith for that. And so not only did they not do what God told them to do, they tried to act on something he told them that he never told the Egyptians and they all perished. Can you see that there's a big difference between real faith in God and presumption? Just assuming and just asking. In John 4 and 41, uh, something I really like, uh, the woman of Samaria at the well of Samaria, had gone back and told her people some things about the Lord. But then Jesus came, and they saw him and heard him personally. And he said, many more believed, John 4, 41, because of his own word. And in verse 42, they said to the woman, now we believe, 
not because of your saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. That's John 4, 42. We have heard him for ourselves, and we know. How many understand there is no substitute for hearing him for yourself? And when you do, then you've got a solid foundation for your faith. Well, looks like our time is up again. Let's say it like we do. I walk by faith. I live by faith. I overcome the world by faith. We're strong in faith, giving glory to God. We'll see you next time. Hello, friends. Uh, Friday at Faith School is Partner Day. And I want to talk to you just a minute about partnership and what it means. The scriptures we've been looking at in Romans says, How shall they preach unless they are sent? And um, these broadcasts and all of the resources of our ministry are made available to anybody anywhere at no charge. In fact, you can go to our website and everything we've got, you can get it, you can download it, watch it, receive it at no charge. Well, all of these things require uh, funds to do, as you know, so how can we do that and not charge for it? Well, two big reasons, the faithfulness and goodness of God to provide, and then also the faithfulness of people that he deals with to sow. And so uh, our partners, we call them word senders. And uh, if you want to become a word sender, you can. If you uh, benefit from these uh, classes and these things and you want to help send them to other people at no charge, you can become a word sender today. There's information uh, on the screen now that you can contact that and you can get involved and whether it's one time or on a regular basis. But uh, remember that when you honor God, He said He will honor you. And it's just a truth of God's faithfulness that when you take care of His things, He'll take care of your things. We're believing with you. Thank you for joining us in accomplishing the call of God.